Hello everyone, this is Lugnuts and welcome to Overflows Part 2. In this video, we'll first look at how we can add some priorities to our overflow designs. Then we'll get to building the ultimate overflow design that doesn't slow down the network at all. Finally, in the last part, we will look at some of these ultimate overflow designs in the wild because there are many different ways you can build them. Let's get started. So here we have our third design with two waiting bays in front of it. So the problem with this design is that it can slow down trains in two ways. One way, trains can enter a depot when they didn't need to, and the other way is they can exit a depot and block other trains from entering. So we can fix that second problem with a priority. So, as we learned in the previous video, depots have a hidden entry signal inside of them, and entry signals will be perfect for building a priority, something like this. However, we're already using this entry signal to look forward into the waiting bays. So what we're going to have to do is end up making a priority that prioritizes both backwards for the trains that are coming and forwards so it doesn't let trains out when there's no space. Because of that, we unfortunately cannot just stick a priority right here. As you can see, this train exits when it shouldn't have because it sees the prio is green. And when either of these signals are green, either forwards or backwards, trains will be let out. And what we want is that trains should only be let out when both are green. There's also the issue where if we turn this train around, we can see that this train can no longer enter the depot just because the combo signal sees the red exit signal and turns red itself. So this doesn't work. So to fix this, we'll replace the forward looking two way exit signal with a normal two way block signal. Then, we'll extend the priority and add an extra bit of track that looks forwards towards the waiting bays. So to do that, let's get these trains out of the way so we have some space. And we'll replace this exit signal here with a little combo signal loop. And keep chaining that back with another combo signal here. But at this point, instead of continuing the priority further back, we will connect it up with this track and have it look forwards into the waiting bay, like so. We also need to have one more signal here, a combo or exit signal, just to separate the block over here from the block over here so that trains don't block each other. So now the whole prioritized area is basically everything in this area. So now trains will wait for going both forwards and backwards. So you can see trains were waiting for this one. This one will head on through, and the trains in this depot are sitting patiently. So I've gone ahead and expanded our stations quite a bit, so now we have quite a few more trains flowing through them, and we can see that the overflow is causing a bit of issues on our line here. Some trains are unnecessarily entering the depot and slowing down trains when they really didn't need to. So now we're going to move on to a design that doesn't cause any slowdowns under normal operation. And like I said before, the big idea will be to move the depot off of the main flow of trains into a separate area. All right, so I've cleared the previous overflow. Let's build the new one. So here where we have our two waiting bays, I'll add a third split off into a reverser. And this will be where trains will enter the overflow area. So then they'll reverse, come around, and I'll make a little loop for them. And then over here, we can add our depot for holding the trains. And then finally, once they enter the depot, I'll add a waiting bay of length three to fit exactly one train before they merge back with the regular flow of traffic here. All right, so now for the hard part, the signals. So let's get started by signaling the area around the depot because we can signal it just like the depot in the first part of this video. Let me first add down our base block signals. Then we want to make sure we have our two-way block signal layer to force trains into the depot. And then we'll add the priority looking backwards. So we'll put a combo signal here, add a loop to chain backwards with another combo signal, add a two-way combo signal here. And then finally at the end, we'll have a track to look if the waiting bay has space. So this priority starts here, it looks backwards at these tracks, and then finally it checks if the waiting bay has room. So that is all we need for the depot area. So next we'll signal the reverser 
we can see here that trains aren't trying to use the overflow because we haven't given them the option to. So we mark these two options with exit signals so we can mark the third option, the overflow, with an exit signal as well. And that's all we'll need for now. And we can see here, trains will start to enter the overflow. However, once we have trains entering the overflow, they'll also be exiting the overflow and we can see that they just end up looping. So then, next we need to signal the waiting bay. So for this waiting bay, let me mark it in green. We want it to do a couple of things. So trains here should both wait for trains that are coming along the main line, and they should also wait for a space to open up in either of these entrances to the station. So let's see how we can do that. Like we did before with the depot, we can chain a priority with something else. In this case, we will chain it with something that looks at these choices over here. So first let's make some room by moving this exit line over to the side. Something like that. Get our signals there. And then we can build our priority here. First we'll change that to an entry signal as usual. Then build a combo signal loop back to chain. And then we can build a two-way combo here. And then at this point we will branch off onto the path that will look towards the choices. So to get the signal from over here to over here, I'm going to use some bridges. So I'm going to raise this land up for the ends of the bridges. And then make sure we have our combo signal here to chain backwards. And finally have a bridge here and another bridge over here and finally connect to the reverser. Then the last thing to do is to change this exit signal to a combo signal. So the way this works is the entry signal here looks back down the priority, chains through the two-way combo, then chains through this combo over the two bridges and then into the reverser block. Finally, it looks through this uh, southward facing combo signal, which in turn looks at the two choices we want to consider. So this does everything we need it to. Now our ultimate overflow design is done. So this has all the features that we we're trying to get. We have the entrance into the overflow that will prevent trains from prematurely entering the overflow, the reverser to hide the depot from the pathfinder, we have the priority for trains coming out of the depot as well as the depot bypass, and we have the injection waiting bay which will wait for trains on the main line as well as wait for space to open up uh, towards the station. So there we have it. So I know for a lot of people, when they see this, they're going to think this is the craziest, most over-engineered waste of space ever. And in a lot of ways, yeah, it is. But depending on things like your train length or the size of the station, the amount of cargo you're moving through it, an overflow like this can be really useful. You don't have to have everything here. For example, you could easily remove the depot priority and depot bypass and just build something like this and you'll save a bunch of space and it doesn't decrease the throughput of the overflow that much. So this example station isn't that large but for larger stations this design can still be used and will work just as well. So let's take a look at some of these stations in the wild. So here is a recent multiplayer game that V453000 was in. So we're looking at his company we can see he has about 450 trains here. And we can see that on each of these primary industries, he has built one of these overflows. So in multiplayer games, overflows are especially useful because you can just spam a ton of trains. And then over time, the production of your industry will increase and trains will be released from the overflow to match. And if the uh, production ever drops, the overflow will handle the excess trains and it'll prevent it from jamming up your network. We can see that all these different overflows are different shapes and sizes, so there's really no single way to build these. So here's another multiplayer game, but this time it's my company. We can see we have some stations here for this food plant. It's producing a decent 3k food a month, and we have this overflow for the pickup. And since we have really long train length 10 here, it's a good thing to have this overflow because if these trains backed up, it would cause quite a problem behind them. So here we have a recent co-op game on the OpenTTD Coop public server and we had this forest here that got up to 2.4k wood per month or something so it was max production causing some trouble and this is the overflow I built to handle this station. You can see reverser here, 
the prio for the depot, and the injection back here. This has one extra little feature, this line which carries the prio under the tunnel for the injection also acts as a lost train escape. So trains that are lost will enter the overflow, turn around, go through the tunnel, and then turn around and exit. So that's just a little extra thing that you can do. So also on this co-op game, we had a big steel pickup over on the north side of the map. And we can see this steel mill is producing 5k steel a month right now. And this also has an overflow built into the entrance. So actually we can see that we have three lines entering. So we have one line here, one line here, and one line here. And each of them has their own reverser. One here, one underneath this tunnel, and one here. And they all turn around and feed back into this overflow depot. And then when they're injected back in, they have three choices for each of the three lines. And each of these choices has their own priority and everything. So this is really the exact same design, but expanded with three entrances and exits. So we can see how this design can work at any station size. So right now it's not being used since we have more steel than we can pick up, but if for some reason our steel production ever dropped, we have uh, 180 trains stopping here, so you don't want those backing up. So that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you found it useful, and if you did, please consider leaving a like. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.